Hello brothers and sisters in YouTube family, hope you guys are being blessed. Sorry it's been a while since putting up a message. It was so busy over here this past week, especially ending on St. Francis feast day, which was yesterday and my anniversary with Jesus. <laughs> I've been planning all week something special for the community by the request of my beloved spouse. So I was really busy with that and also having difficulty in discernment as well. I was unsure about a couple of messages and finally had time to sit with Mother Claire to help me discern if these messages were from the Lord, and they were. So this is a message given to me a couple days ago where I got a word from Jesus and from St. Michael the Archangel. This was the day of St. Archangel Michael's feast day, September 29th. Here on the mountain, we had been doing an extended 40-day novena to St. Michael for intercession over the surrounding areas of this community that the wickedness and stronghold in this area would be brought down, and witchcraft and satanic influences would be bound. So this morning, I woke up with excitement and a heart of gratitude towards him and believing that our prayers had been answered. St. Michael has only appeared to me once in a dream given to me from Jesus, where he came to rescue me as I was calling for help. I saw him and others flying. His arms were huge as he pointed to one of his companions to come and get me. Would you know that companion who had disguised himself for a while turned out to be Jesus, come to scoop me up in his arms? It was such a comforting dream. I've always had desire to know the ministry of angels, what they do, the difference in their ministry to God and to us. I was once given a word by a friend that the Lord would grant me the grace to know the ministry of angels. Since then, little by little, through scripture and holy books, the Lord has given me more insight. So there are the seven archangels who lead the other rank of angels, which all have different ministries. There are the priestly angels, such as Melchizedek, and a choir of angels in the same rank. They are over regions and nations to prepare the way for the Lord spiritually and physically. That is what he did when he was assigned to mankind in Abraham's time. He prepared the way by teaching the people God's way, establishing priestly religious traditions, and preparing the land physically wherever he went. He would dig out wells, put up markers all through the land for future cities that would be the Lord's. He did that for Jerusalem. This information can be found in the Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich book of Full Visions of Jesus' Life. Then the Lord has made me to be aware that there are angels of conversion, angels of breakthrough, destroying angels which can be found all through scripture in various places. One reference is Psalm 78.49. One reference is Psalm 78.49. It says, he sent upon them his burning anger, fury, and indignation, and trouble, a band of destroying angels. There's so many more we don't know about, working all for his glory and here to assist us on earth. I was thinking about all these things this morning as I was getting ready for prayer. Then after prayer and receiving the Lord, I came to him saying, Good morning, Jesus. What's on your heart? Jesus began, A war is raging in the heavens for your nation and for souls. Continue to pray, beloved little one. Continue to pray. The novenas you all have done have been a tremendous help and has done great damage in the kingdom of darkness. I know many times you and others feel your prayers and your sacrifices are fruitless, but they are not, beloved. I'm so grateful for every little sacrifice backed up with prayer is an atomic bomb into the enemy's camp and sends the demons running in terror. So I come to encourage you today that indeed what you all have been praying for you will see come to pass right before your eyes. The wickedness and darkness over my people in this area has been looming over them for centuries, but is now receding. The ministry in the valley began to take off as I'm touching the lives of the families you visit. Here as an aside, he's talking about the food ministry we do here in the community. Every two weeks we go down the valley, giving food to our neighbors, which has grown to 16 families, and also given words of life from Jesus on cards, personal rhema cards for each person within the families we're praying for. Even now, many hearts of the matriarchs in the home desire and hunger after me. So don't shy away to teach them all I've taught you guys through Mother Claire. Teach them about intimacy with me, to get their own words from me. Tell them of my love and how approachable I am, and share with them the enemy's tactics that hinder them from hearing or seeing me. Start there, beloved. Every word you all speak will bear fruit, for I've prepared the soul of their hearts to receive me more and more. On the weeks you don't go down, pray for them fervently, that they would be willing to be made willing, and entrust each soul to my mother's immaculate heart for full conversion, and we will do wonders.
Thank you, Lord, for your words of encouragement concerning the food ministry. Jesus continued, My beloved little one, I've seen your doubts and unbelief the past couple of days in you coming before me, wondering if anything you have been doing is fruitful. My dear brides, many of you are undergoing the same attack as demons of gossip have been sent out to lie to you concerning where you stand with me. Don't listen to the lies, my dear one. It is because of the abundant fruit you are bearing that I hide from you the results in all that you do and give me. To keep you humble and little, my brides, that you stay before me in need of me and not puffed up in your ability in any way. However, I've told you and will tell you again, your prayers are powerful, my dear ones. So very powerful. Don't stop praying for your nation. Don't stop praying for your president. And don't stop praying for your beloved ones and lost souls. Remember, I said, ask anything in my name and it will be answered. John fourteen thirteen. Your prayers will be answered, my brides, and it's only because of your prayers that this nation and this world is still standing as it is. Because of your prayers and tears, as you continue to cry out for mercy, will I not give it? As the deep state intends to move forward and thinks it will have victory over this nation, they fail to see my secret weapon, my praying brides. Now that is my trump card, that even the devils do not foresee, because in their eyes, my brides, you are weak, lowly, of no account, simple, small, and of no use to them. But that is precisely why your prayers are so powerful. Because before me, you are nothing. Me in you is everything. And you stand like giants in my kingdom. Only until heaven will you see the treasure stored up for you with every little sacrifice, every tear, every sigh, and every prayer offered up to me was used and brought graces down. At this point, I was sensing strongly that St. Archangel Michael wanted to speak to me. I was being flooded with strong thoughts in my heart and mind concerning who he is and what he does. So after Jesus stopped speaking, I just began to write what I sensed he was telling me. And it was St. Archangel Michael speaking. St. Michael began, Precious soul, you have desired to know the ministry of angels, and the good Lord has permitted me to come to you to encourage you, and the precious ones on earth to continue to pray and enlist more of heavenly assistance in all you do. You are surrounded by the finest of angels in heaven. All the brides of Christ are. Your garden angels are very present with you all. They sent messages and prayers daily to the Father's heart concerning you and imparting messages to you, I might add. I responded, how is that? St. Michael continued, we are created beings just as you are. We came from the Father's heart, so in heaven everything is in union with God. Everything is a part of him. Mankind is just an exile from their source of life, like a plug. But Jesus provided a way, an extension if you would call it, back to the Father so that souls who would believe in him would not be exiled completely upon the earth, but would still be able to have union with God through Jesus living in them. Such a great mystery and privilege we angels wish we could experience, yet mankind takes for granted. We're very much a part of your day-to-day life upon the earth. For when the fallen angels were sent down to wage war with mankind, we were also sent to protect and help God's chosen souls to return back to him. I am over all the souls upon the earth, through the grace God has bestowed upon me. Your garden angels communicate with me, covering your needs and what assignments are against you. We all work together in perfect harmony that the Father's will may be done in each soul. What grieves us the most is when a soul rejects the grace of God and continues on in their own way because of free will. The grace of God is the greatest gift to mankind, for it has been freely given by the work of Christ on the cross, that all who would believe in him would be saved. Tell the precious souls of the earth to trust in God's grace, to receive his grace, that they may obtain eternal salvation for this life and the life to come. You see, when the grace of God is working through a soul, they begin to pray according to God's will. And when you pray, my precious soul, all of heaven climbs the ear to your request. Your garden angels send the commands to go forth, and me and the rest of the angels ensure its fulfillment. Even the smallest prayer, A simple cry for help summons legions of angels to your assistance. That is what we were created for, to assist God in the work of redemption of mankind and to assist you. The precious souls of the earth don't ask enough for our help or of our intercession. We live before the glory of God day and night. All we do is praise, worship, and pray to him that his will may be done on earth. At this point, I was in awe of what he was saying. And I remember Jesus' message to Mother Claire that we should pray for wounded angels. 
So then a thought came to my mind to ask him. Blessed St. Michael, I was unaware that angels get wounded too. I thought you couldn't be touched. St. Michael responded, It is a war, precious one. In a war, whether heavenly or earthly, there are always casualties. We too suffer in various ways, because of mankind's faults to sin. But we suffer with much joy, much praise, and a great reverence to God's will. However, we are quickly healed and restored when we enter back in the presence of God. His glory, His beauty, and His love overwhelms us, that we wish then to suffer even more if we could. That is why we envy mankind in this way. The greatest gift is indeed the cross of suffering, and when a soul receives such a grace and a gift from God, it's met with complaint, with resentment, and with anger. From heaven we don't understand that at all. Only if you behold the glory of the one who sits on the throne, and what love he has for you, to give you such a gift. In heaven, you'll come to wish you suffered more all for his glory. It moves God to tears and fills heaven with so much joy when a soul accepts their cross and praises him instead. Precious souls of the earth, thank the good Lord like never before. Worship him in spirit and in truth. Now is the darkest time on earth, so your praises shoot forth like shooting stars in the night sky straight to heaven, lighting up the Father's heart with love and joy at your response. Thank the Lord for your garden angels who are right there every day praying for you and assisting you. Call upon them often for help and an aid in all that you do. Continue to list on intercession as you're helping pushing back the darkness until it's appointed time over your nation and over the world. We will be victorious over the war in the heavens. That was the end of St. Michael's message to us. Since becoming a heart dweller and realizing that heaven is so real, and the people of heaven are always with us, and so are our garden angels. I have become more aware and sensitive of their presence. I ask my garden angel often to help me with the simplest of things, especially when I have to move something that's heavy, I ask for his assistance. Or if I'm in need of strength of any kind, I ask him to help me. He's my forever companion and always with me. I also ask him to pray for me often. If I have a busy day and I can't finish my prayers, I ask him to finish them for me. You can do that, you know. Your garden angel is always with you. Also, the Lord has given me a grace to sense when the atmosphere around me has changed and holy angels are on their own. My ears pop, and that goes for you all as well. When you are in a place and there's no change in elevation and your ears pop, it's a sign that the atmosphere has changed and angels are in their own. Then the Lord in his great mercy gave me another grace where I began to hear angel wings. I would hear loud fluttering really fast in my ear like huge wings beating, and would look around. No one was there, but I knew it was the holy angels or my garden angel making his presence known. The first time it startled me, but now when it happens, I simply thank them and ask them to pray for me and defend me. Lastly, I would love to end with a dream that the Lord gave one of the intercessors who was doing the novena with us as well. This really showed the role of St. Michael and how he too works with God by snatching souls from the edge of hell. Here is the dream as she writes, I had an awesome dream last night about St. Michael the Archangel. I dreamed I saw the fire of hell, and there were several lines of souls headed for hell. The lines merged eventually into two lines headed for hell. Someone was interceding for souls in one of the lines, but it was at a distance. I didn't know who it was. However, over the other line I saw St. Michael was interceding, who was blocking the way so that no one in the line could go to hell without going past him. Many souls were walking right past him, even between his legs, but St. Michael bent down and scooped up two huge handful of souls with his enormous hands. Some of the souls fell through his fingers, but the ones that remained began to shine like little stars. There were twelve souls in each hand. Then he hurled them out of the line, back towards the presence of the Lord. The souls that had just been rescued turned and looked back at the fire of hell and began to realize what they had just been saved from and started thanking and praising God. Wow, amazing. Thank you, Jesus, and thank you, St. Michael, Archangel, for your protection, your love, and your prayers for us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. May your word go forth and not return void. Jesus, thank you so much for these creatures, heavenly beings, and friends, Lord, that you've given us to assist us on this walk on earth until eternity. We thank you, Holy Angels, for your assistance, for your protection, for your intercession. Thank you for your love for us, that you're wounded for us. Thank you for your protection. Please, holy angels, please pray for us, that we may truly live in the glory of God, that we may love him and do his will. 
help pray for us that would have your perspective. And thank you, St. Ar Archangel Michael, for your defense and your protection over the nation, over the world, over our souls, and over the church. Thank you for snatching souls out of hell with your intercession, that you too pray for us. Thank you, Jesus, for this amazing heavenly family. They continue to pull back the veil that we may know them more and more and come to love them more and more. Truly, how blessed we are to know you, Jesus, and to have the kingdom of God within us and to have this amazing family helping us on our journey here upon our, on earth in this exile until we see you into eternity. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.